coma is more than being unconscious. So then, how do we define consciousness and unconsciousness? First of all, they act as umbrella terms for different levels of brain activity and awareness. Consciousness, in essence, means brain function that results in a certain level of responsiveness, awareness, and wakefulness. Unconsciousness, meanwhile, is the opposite. It's unresponsiveness, or a very, very primitive level of response, being unaware of one's surroundings and or not being awake. While there are many different levels of consciousness and unconsciousness, let's focus on a few of the terms specific to the discussion of coma. For the purposes of this video, we'll be placing each term along a spectrum that is broken into two parts, non-comatose states and comatose states. Our first and most conscious level is being fully alert and attentive. This is the state you're likely in right now. You're responsive, engaged, and with it. You are fully aware of your surroundings and can fully engage and interact with them. Next is encephalopathy or delirium. Encephalopathy encompasses any brain disorder, disease, dysfunction, degeneration, damage, or malfunction. Delirious individuals can be restless, agitated, paranoid, and incoherent, and they may hallucinate and have a rapid heart rate and wide pupils. Locked-in syndrome. A person appears to be unconscious, but isn't. Their eyes are open, blink and move vertically, but they make no other movements. They are more or less awake and responsive, but are essentially unable to show it. Causes include brainstem abnormalities, such as a stroke, or medication. Minimally conscious state. A person sometimes opens their eyes and looks about, sometimes even making sounds or saying a word, but they aren't clearly aware of and can't engage with their surroundings. Persistent vegetative state. This is an extremely rare state where a person is awake but has no signs of awareness. Their brain doesn't function, but they appear conscious. They can open their eyes and have moments of sleep and wakefulness. They can breathe on their own and may live for years or decades in this state with proper care. And here is where we move into unconsciousness. For the purposes of this video, we are moving past normal unconscious sleep and only focusing on comatose states. A comatose state is an unreceptive and unresponsive state beyond just sleeping. Unlike sleeping individuals, comatose individuals don't wake up, speak, or open their eyes in response to external stimuli, such as someone talking or turning on the light. They are also unaware of what's happening in their surroundings while comatose. The first kind of comatose state we are covering is a medically induced coma. This is a short-term coma brought on by the use of anesthetic medications. This is often done to calm ICU patients and to allow a ventilator to work properly. Once medications are disconnected from the patient, they will return to responsiveness. Acute coma. An acute coma is a short-term coma, usually meaning less than one year. Individuals often show improvement within the first three to seven days after they became comatose. Prolonged coma. A prolonged coma is a longer term coma. It's required that the individual be in a coma for at least a year before this diagnosis can be made with certainty, and even then with some hesitation. Brain death. Brain death is a state beyond coma. At this point, the individual's automatic systems, such as their heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing, fail, and the brainstem loses all function. All automatic systems are only continuing because a machine is controlling them for the individual. This means no responses, no grimacing, no coughing, no eye or limb movements, no reflexes, and no breathing. Essentially, no signs of life are detected. The individual is legally dead. For more information on comatose states, consciousness, unconsciousness, and more, you can order a copy of Guide to the Comatose Patient, available at mcpress.mayoclinic.org or wherever books are sold.